Hi, I'm Tanya Partridge, and in this segment we're going to be talking about quitting smoking and the resources available to you. Quitting smoking is the number one way to both prevent COPD and stop the progression of the disease. If you've been diagnosed with COPD, you probably have already quit smoking, but you may have family members who still smoke, and secondhand smoke can be just as damaging as smoking itself. So even if you don't need this information, a family member might. Remember to always talk to your doctor when you are thinking about quitting smoking. He can, or she can help you find the best method of quitting that's best suited to you. Our first guest is Shannon Vaffis. Shannon is the assistant director for MASHLINE and is a great resource for your smoking cessation quest. Thank you. Hello, my name is Shannon Vafis, and I'm here to tell you about the services Ashline has to stop smoking. We offer free telephone and web-based quit services for those who wish to stop smoking. Many of our coaches are former smokers, so they know what you're going through. They'll be your personal trainer for quitting tobacco, help you set goals, work toward a quit date, and provide support. Just like a personal trainer, a coach will work with you one-on-one -on -one to keep you on track and help you make adjustments to your quit plan along the way. People who use both medications and coaching have a much greater success rate for quitting than those who use medications only or go cold turkey. Don't get discouraged if at first you don't succeed at your attempts to quit. It usually takes about 10 tries before a person has long-term success. Let's start by discussing a method that we don't recommend for quitting. The electronic cigarette, or e-cigarette, is a new product that is not FDA approved for quitting smoking. Nicotine is dissolved in ethylene glycol, which is the same compound as antifreeze. So the FDA is still investigating the safety of using this product. Now let's talk about some nicotine replacement therapies and some medications that are available to help you on your journey to quit smoking. Nicotine replacement therapy should only be used when you're actively trying to quit smoking. Let's talk about the nicotine gum. There's a right way to chew nicotine gum. When you start, place a piece of gum in your mouth and chew slowly to avoid any feelings of ill effect in your stomach. Stop chewing when you get a peppery taste or feel a slight tingling, usually after about 15 chews. And then park the gum by placing it between your cheek and your gums. Start chewing again slowly when the peppery taste or tingling is almost gone, about one minute. Start this process again until most of the nicotine is gone from the gum, about 30 minutes. Don't use more than 30 pieces of Nicorette or 20 pieces of Nicorette DS per day. And as your need for nicotine goes away, usually within two to three months, use fewer pieces of gum, and then stop when you're at one or two pieces a day, unless your doctor tells you otherwise. Carry the gum with you at all times in case you feel the need to smoke again. Nicotine patch is a product that sticks on your body kind of like a Band-Aid. The amount of nicotine is less than you would get from smoking, but it may be enough to keep you from wanting cigarettes or having other withdrawal symptoms like headache. A nicotine inhaler, or the nicotine inhalation system, is a mouthpiece and a cartridge that looks much like a plastic hollow cigarette. In that, you place a nicotine-filled cartridge and then breathe air through the mouthpiece and refill the cartridge as needed. Nicotine inhalers help with both the physical and psychological aspects of quitting smoking. Another product available is the nicotine lozenge. Stop all smoking before beginning therapy with the lozenge. Don't eat or drink for 15 minutes before using the lozenge, as some beverages can reduce its effectiveness. Suck on the lozenge until it dissolves but don't bite or chew it like hard candy, and don't swallow it whole. Stop using the lozenge after about 12 weeks. 
If you still feel the need to use a lozenge, talk to your doctor. Don't use the lozenge if you continue to smoke, chew tobacco, use snuff, or any other product containing nicotine. This includes use of nicotine patch or gum. Besides these nicotine replacement therapies, there are also medications such as Chantix and Zyban that can help with quitting. Contact your health insurance company to see what they'll pay for. You may think that the medicines and nicotine replacement are expensive, but it's less expensive in the long run for both your wallet and your health. If you're thinking about quitting, call the Arizona Smokers Helpline or Ashline at 1-800-556-6222 to speak with a quit coach or to schedule for a coach to call you. You can also visit our website at www.ashline.org. The website is available anytime you need support, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and has many tips and coping skills that you can use. Good luck on your non-smoking adventure.